come back again. Welcome to part two of the channel news today, 23rd 5th, 2022. Uh, so yeah, we've got a new chip coming and a new CPU case coming. Uh, so, we're looking forward to that, rebuilding the, the PC. So yeah, it's business gets going, you end up with more and more parts and uh, you can buy and sell and upgrade as well. So if you go along the course, I think that the best bet is to get started with a uh, decent get, uh, PC gaming case. Probably get the best one you can afford to buy. Then after that, get your power supply. And it doesn't really matter what computer you got. You can always upgrade it as it goes. There's lots of different generations going on. Uh, as time goes by, you can always buy and sell and trade up. There's new stuff coming out. It's amazing, really. Yeah, I mean, if technology is your thing, uh, obviously not everybody's into computers uh, and the internet, what have you. But it's an amazing phenomenon. It's an amazing world where anybody can literally get on and start streaming and get out there and make your voice heard. Uh, trap people who's like minded but of course the internet is conflict this is the bottom line really it brings people uh, billions of people face to face with each other and uh, finds out all of their differences all of the little nuances and uh, obviously the big fear artificial intelligence we've got it all going on Particle accelerators, artificial intelligence, quantum computers, aliens from another world, disclosure, the UFO people, internet paranoid conspiracy theorists, whistleblowers, the government, psyops. And yeah, the internet itself just just does the it and just plain old lies, misinformation, and uh, Bitcoin scams. Currency scams, stock market scams, con artists, fraud, and just downright, just downright lies. Really, I don't think anything's impacted human, human, humankind. It's such an impact that computers and the internet have had, and and to be honest, as crazy as it seems, the other half of the people on the planet, about half of those population, aren't on it yet. So that we're kind of only halfway through the uh, through the process, really, of internet internationalization through the internet, really, and globalization through the internet and the World Wide Web. We've seen the most incredible phenomena of our time. The fact of the matter is this: Would we have seen it if it hadn't been for the internet and the mobile phone? Everybody's filming on the mobile phone and uploading to YouTube. Or traditionally watching on TV, but would people uh, have even had the idea in their imaginations to even get anywhere if it wasn't for the internet and global communications and stuff like that? For example, if all these immigrants didn't see the West uh, on TV, would they even want to come to the West in the first place? So that's that's kind of like the. Uh, Damned if you do, damned if you don't. Catch 22, dog eat dog. Or dog eats its own tail. Sort of world that we live in via the internet. Everybody's got their own conspiracy theory. And obviously there's all sorts of online advertising. Uh, cookies and online travelling. Online tracking. You name it, it's going on. Via the internet uh, and computers. Who sees that the never ending phenomenon? It will seem like the never ending phenomenon of advertising, the media, internet continues to hurtle on forward. It disrupt people, disrupt people's minds. And now we're getting into sort of artificial intelligence, region of interrogation, park accelerators over at CERN, quantum computers. What people uh, in the media, uh, particularly in the mainstream media, and propaganda, 
well, we've got the whistleblower conspiracy theories side of the internet. We had aliens, ancient aliens, people saw like Freddy Krueger like beaming into people's dreams, people beaming into people's subconscious, predictive programming, terrorism of course. We will say like the the mind, the human mind has been peppered with billions of uh, constructs in their imagination all about the world, and uh, yeah, I suppose we've seen it all. Uh, terrorist attacks, uh, racism, religiousism, you know, countryism, war, private warfare, uh, too big to fail banks, with global economic collapse, uh, mercenaries and terrorism, horrific violence, drugs, drug dealing. We're saying that the human mind has never been confronted with so much information, so many thoughts, so many ideas than at any other time in history. People in the past really, uh, as regards, they didn't really have all this technology and the evolution of technology and the ways where we're going. There's all sorts of ideas floating around the human imagination and, uh, and the human psyche that we're taking to be reality itself. The question is, what is real? Something that people have been asking for as long as there has been people in the world. Who am I? What am I doing here? Why am I even here? What's the meaning of life? Is there any point to any of this? Is it all just greed? Exploitation? Is there anything genuine? Are there genuine feelings and thoughts? Genuine emotions? Uh, genuine connection with each other in the world? And we have the it's a very powerful and strong image of the face corporation, the stock market, up and down. And we have the horror, you know, the mini horror. Every day we turn on the news and we expose ourselves to the mini horror for the 5, 10, 15 minutes that the news is on. We are completely and totally terrorised and horrified. Well then, in the depths of our despair, we move on to the weather, on sports, or uh, covering up uh, the horrific news. Some people think that, that this is the necessary magic needed to keep people here in the realm. Now, for for there to be a United States of America, or for the for there to be an Israel, or for there to be an Islam or communism, global communism, uh, for there to be people have to abide or reside in the psychic realm. For example, the British Empire. You know, people reside in the realm. Of the British Empire. And this is very peculiar. Uh, with regards to human psyche. Who are we when we sleep? Who are we when we dream? Who are we when our thoughts carry us away? Are we only you know, white or black? Because that's what our minds tell us we are. We're told that we're on the edge of a great awakening. If to believe top voices on the internet like David Icke or Alex Jones or Santos Bonacci, great names, great independent minds, great thinkers, great 
great scholars like Bobby Hemmett or Professor Griff or KRS One or Stefan Molyneux. Great independent filmmakers like Dinesh D'Souza or Eamon Ra. Or is this the fallacy of humanity? The fabrication and the falsification of life itself. We've had many great souls pass through here. And one such great soul at my heart out of mine would be the founder of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Prabhupada. There are some internet conspiracy theorists that believe that he was just used to weaken America, take America away from its Christian base. He was an individual, a single man, that arguably built one of the biggest religious organisations in the world today. The International Society for Krishna Consciousness. But also, you could argue, was victim number one of the whole uh, conspiracy theory that you would have a great leader, Prabhupada, causing a great social movement, the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, operating all over the world. Russia, Ukraine, Britain, America, India, Australia, China, and lots of few in China, but pretty much all over the world. We have this whole uh, propagation of this free my bag of some the propagation of uh Prabhupada's books the bag of it is uh, and which other works? So if that evolves, evolves and involves the lives of millions of people, hundreds of millions of people out there in the world are involved in the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. It's crazy that may uh, sound, there's probably more people involved in that than there is in, you know, Western Europe and America. The number. It makes me wonder if the images and the propaganda are the necessary psychic sigils or uh, psychic magic needed to keep the realm, the realm creators and the realm possessors in the position of power over the realm, seeing as they've created a realm such as the realm of the British Empire. They're going to be the gods. They're going to be the kings and queens and the royalty, the government, the prime ministers, the soldiers, the police of said realm. And isn't that the magic of the human consciousness and the human psyche that we're going to create whole entire realms, perhaps through nothing more than our own imagination? If we can dream it, we can achieve it. So if we dream an Israel or a Palestine, an Iraq, what if we dream the United States of America? Or what if we dream into being a team, a business, a product? Dare I even say a religion? A church. Well, if we were to assess everything that has been created from the human psyche, we'll be here for a very long time trying to figure this all out. There are millions and millions of uh, people out there. There are millions and millions of religions thousands of different nations and peoples and races hundreds of thousands of different religions and kinds and historical traditions and hundreds and hundreds of uh, nations 
and countries. The human brain, the human psyche, the human consciousness, uh, the human mind, uh, the human being can create infinite and unlimited worlds. Something that through computer based technology we're beginning to find out there's millions of video games, there's hundreds of thousands of movies and episodes on Netflix, uh, Hollywood of course, TV, the BBC, all these different language groups in the world and nations of course have their own uh, psychic, sociolinguistic reality, history and culture uh, uh, and voice Way, way of being, mode of being. So, in uh, the presence of this incredible human diversity of four uh, generations uh, of the mind, of people, of kinds, of nations, uh, of global religions, the idea that, uh, you know, it can be a new world order or a global illuminus. The idea itself is has inherent flaws in that if there were to be the perfect world order, it in itself would mean stagnation. in itself would mean a, a concrete abstraction that could never evolve, that could never change, that could never develop, that could never explore new pathways in the perfection of the luminous and the new world order. That perfection is its own concrete abstract death. It would be the end of its uh, continuum and going concern for it to achieve its uh, vision of perfection a new world order an international monetary fund IMF, a world bank a world health organisation uh, uh, you know, a united you know, homogeneous united nation NATO conceptually Could that idea, or even that singular thought form, effectively contaminate the human psyche and the world into creating that new world order, or the one perfect world government? I can't help but think that in. Uh, the desire to achieve this uh, alleged and so-called perfection would only end up in a place where humankind itself stagnated. That there would be no further room for improvement we would become solidified. We would no longer flow eternally. Perhaps in coming to perfection, we come to mm, the end of the road. So, the levels of projection that uh, the mainstream media reality uh, creation program might not be the highest human ideal. Especially when it would lead to, on its success, so much stagnation. Obviously, the conceptual scenario across the metaphysics of human thought is all very OTT. Really, we are divided in the moment dealing with 
billions of thoughts and billions of conflicting ideas the grief and of hopelessness and of loss and of despair something that all the present circumstances uh, this feeling is only amplified uh, to the point of extreme ridiculousness. Alright, we're back again. Welcome to part two of the channel news today, 23rd, 5th.